So uh, thank you for everybody uh, for staying here today after lunch. It's not going to be easy, I'm sure. So I'll try to be a little bit of entertaining. So we're going to cover another areas of, uh, basically is another use case on how uh, we use the grid gain into the travel industry. In particular, how uh, grid gain allow it to achieve scalability and high performance with, uh, especially when you're dealing with the legacy travel application. So the, the areas that we're going to cover today is uh, what is the aim of this presentation because I always try to think about that I want to leave you with something. Uh, a little bit about uh, Jack Travel, the company uh, and me and then uh, I'll go through the cases that we went through and how these cases have become a technology challenge and then uh, the conclusion. So the aim of uh, today is uh, I want to give you three main topics uh, to bring with you today. The first one is that uh, uh, how to protect the existing legacy investment and uh, identifying the core critical components are quickly become obsolete uh, and due to the stress on the increased business. So basically the traffic, how these one uh, generate uh, uh, a big problem from the current application. And uh, the second topic is that uh, how grid uh, allow uh, us uh, to create a good, uh, um, a good uh, migration plan, uh, allowing me to decouple what is uh, a, uh, a critical component of the application and, and save the core. The third one is talking about a little bit of efficiency on a grid gain uh, and how these are reduce the total cost of ownership for the stuff, for the, uh, for the overall project. So around uh, Jack Travel, Jack Travel is a B2B uh, hotel global market wholesaler that was established in 75 and uh, in terms of numbers we're talking about a 420 million turnover uh, with 20,000 customers. Uh, we currently have a 23,000 contracted hotel and, uh, and uh, 170,000 aggregate hotels from also from uh, third parties and uh, aggregators. Uh, we currently run in, that was already old, we break uh, uh, the 300 million search per day, okay, in the, uh, just this week, and uh, roughly we're doing uh, uh, amount of uh, 1.3 okay, okay, million okay, booking per year well, with a target of reach 1.5. So this is a pretty much, uh, uh, in a nutshell, we have 600 employees, and uh, the two main uh, things that uh, Jack do is a uh, group as well as uh, FIT, and that's the main areas of uh, the discussion we're gonna talk today is primarily over FIT. So a little bit about me. I'm the CTO of Jack Travel. I spent a lot of years and years into the uh, into the uh, travel industries and in the e-commerce business and uh, in the last years uh, with uh, Orbitz, uh, eBookers, uh, GTA and uh, Locos and Jack in, in, in the travel industry. So, so I, I built several platform and each platform has a challenge in itself. And uh, we're, not, we're gonna basically talk about what is the business challenge that Jack Travel had. So first of all, in 2015, Jack acquired Total Stay, another competitor's friendly competitors, okay? And we, as this acquisition now, the group started having two different platforms, one from Jack Travel, uh, Travel Studio, and one from Total Stay, iVector, one from Open Destination, one from Intuity. And uh, the customer and data Okay, our distribution in, in both uh, platform. There is a little bit of overlapping between the two with 25%, but pretty much this is the scenario, okay? In uh, the ideal situation for the, cast, for the Jack was uh, to move to a single platform, have a seamless integration for customers, capable to handle the combined traffic of 260 million, okay? They don't want business interruption because that is going to be very costly. 
and uh, at the same time they want to protect the existing investor. That's, this is a very key important uh, point because Jack Travel own uh, iVector software. Uh, they bought the software. So that uh, of the two platforms we decided to invest in uh, iVector. And uh, we did a, a very large uh, CapEx investment in the last uh, years. And this investment is a key factor on the decision making point. So I like to present to everybody the typical mission impossible task from the, the Dilbert boss. Okay, I love this one. Here is a new task, migrate a single platform in a blink of a high. It must be seamless for all your customer. And by the way, while you're doing that, increase the number of search by 400% at no extra cost. It is a commercial imperative. This is what we received as a Dilbert, okay? So how we approach that? So before that, uh, it's important. You already uh, saw the, the keynotes from, uh, uh, from um, uh, CG consultant, okay, Chris Goodall. And uh, the Jack Travel was engaged already with uh, CG consultant for during the due diligence. So the next step for us was engage uh, CG consultant in build uh, uh, the team that allow us to go through this uh, journey. So uh, CG consultant provide a, a full set of uh, expertise in an area where Jack Travel was not uh, uh, well founded, especially in the grid gain, in the agile community. So G Jack till then was uh, outsourcing pretty much all the systems. So the idea is with uh, uh, this uh, decision was to start the concept of the digital transformation. And to do that, the best way is to, it's to inject the people that have done already the agile. And that's exactly what uh, uh, CG consultant did for us, and they helped us to build the, uh, the, the, the prototype, they, did the, they helped us to do the, the selection of the vendor, so I'm not going to spend time here while we picked uh, uh, grid gain versus the other ones, okay? But they helped us to do that, they, they helped us to build a, a prototype that proved that uh, grid gain was the solution, okay? And then we went into the the challenge of uh, using uh, uh, grid gain to build uh, the, the future. So in terms of uh, technology overview, so you saw the business challenge and you saw now how this has to be translated in a technology challenge. So, and here a little bit of uh, important things. So the first one, I like always to think about the good and the bad of a trading platform. So. Uh, in terms of, uh, if you're not familiar for a core technology travel platform, usually a very big, We're talking about the nine to 10 million line of codes. And of this one, 20% only of these are uh, subject to a high transaction volume. The rest is absolutely core features that are working fine. So they are very expensive to re-implement it. There's nothing wrong with a normal RDBMS uh, implementation and so on. And uh, it, they are very also uh, uh, expensive to build, but uh, as a consequence, they're also expensive to scale. So again, remember the concept of, uh, do you really need a, a Ferrari uh, to give it to a kid that they can only go in streets where 10 or 15 miles per hour is the limit? So it's a waste. So you need to really ponder in when you think about this. And that's exactly what we did. So the action for us was we need to protect the 80%. And at the same time, we need to redevelop the 20% the under a high transaction volume. So the next topic was uh, we have two trading platforms. Okay? So two trading platforms means uh, uh, there are commercial, operation complexity. There are customers in one area, product in another area, contract in one area, in both. They're, both systems are not suitable and flexible when introducing new functionalities. And then at the same time, they are not scalable. So how we solve this? So the target for us was uh, to select a strategic architecture that allow us to combine these two business together Okay, and, uh, and uh, at the same time to allow to deliver this functionality very quickly. Uh, and uh, at the same time, okay, 
with uh, the possibility to integrate uh, these two vendors uh, during the migration. The other things uh, was uh, clearly the interaction of a uh, service-oriented architecture and microservices, okay? Last, okay, so the, what was a must have for a ch challenge? It was uh, the idea to easy to distribute the, all the content to all clients without impacting the response time. And at the same time, the fast time to market uh, was a key factor. Easy to scale and very efficient, okay? And uh, that was one of the very important topic for the financial officer. It was uh, reduce the total cost of ownership, okay? And uh, not distribute the business. So that's where grid gain came. So we had to have a super fast search response time below one second mark. In our agile development with, con uh, with uh, CI implementation and owning the intellectual properties. Use the grid gain to build a new 20%, fast computing for response and more efficient to scale up and low data center footprint. Okay? So these were the scenario that we came in front. So how we solve this one? And I want to, so now I want to, I had this one in my mind, a vision, on a very simple way to represent how this can be done. So I'll, uh, that's the, the fun part, I try to leave it to you guys, okay? So have you ever seen the hot rod garage? Okay, it's uh, a fantastic uh, TV show, okay? That uh, uh, what they're doing is like, uh, they're taking, uh, uh, it's a concept of the 80-20 restoration approach. They take uh, an old, but good car, replace the engine with the latest faster uh, that they have, and then while restoring the beauty of the exterior. This is exactly what the hot rod was. And that's, with this one in mind, okay, you can do the same similitude with the travel, okay? So you go, translate to travel, okay? You have a good, a good travel technology uh, platform that is written in all technology, okay? You replace the heavy computation part, okay, that uh, I call the, for me is the search plus cache and channel manager. So it's a little bit more detailed for travel. Just think about search, okay? And then retune the existing features. So with this one in mind, you will be able to get a supercharged travel platform. So that's focus because this one cover a simple things. I have the 80-20 rules. I need to save the investment, and at the same time, I need to be sure that uh, the key factor of the 20% is uh, super fast, okay? So let's see how this is translated in a very simple thing. So if you remember that picture over there, I took the engine and I put the engine over there. And I make a very simple example for you guys. And is the search. That's the typical things, okay, that in our business model comes. You have a London, two adult plus one child, arrival date, two of July, 17, duration, three nights. Very simple. London, okay, roughly in our business, okay, is very complicated because we have like more than 3,000 internal hotels. All the competitors together, they provide to us roughly around another 20,000 hotels. There is massive, more than 70% of of a duplication, okay? Everybody try to sell their own. They call different, the room in a different way. You need to do the deduping, the mapping, and all this in real time. So currently, our system do not really perform very well. So the, the, pro, the process that we have to do is get the property, get the rooms based on the occupancy type, get availabilities, for this one. Then get the base rates, apply special offers, apply supplements. All these are tasks that you have to cannot uh, parallelize, unfortunately. Then apply the margin, dedupe, put the price, and you get the search results. At the end, you can do that. So what we have done with the grid gain is exactly this. Now, what we have done is like we took out the search from the main core platform, okay? It's still there, the search, because you need to still doing that. 
but uh, we replicate the entire search in grid gates. Now, if you think in this way, it's not that simple, because now all this data needs to be replicated. Okay? But that's the beauty of grid gate, because uh, I don't have to denormalize, change anything. So what I did, we took, we took a grid gate, we inject on top of the existing database, by the way, is Microsoft SQL, okay, for the joy, okay? And uh, on top of this one, the only things that you had to do, denormalizing them in a minimum way, but at the same time, now you need to put these two databases, do these two data store in sync. And so the part that uh, our friend uh, still has to do is the event. So we built in our system an entire event uh, uh, processing okay, that capture every single change that is happening in the main database for each one of these uh, objects. And it's replicated instantly in the, the grid gain data store. Doing this, uh, we use uh, uh, RabbitMQ as a messaging uh, for uh, handling this. So grid gain is a consumer of all the transactions that are going into the cluster of uh, RabbitMQ. And every transaction is taken and deployed in grid gain and update and update in real time. So when uh, someone talk about and they talk about a grid gain as a cache, okay, it's wrong because for us it's another database. Okay, it is a live instant update because uh, we have less than two milliseconds okay, for the event processor to go through the entire chain. Also when we have uh, uh, millions of transactions that are happening because uh, the channel manager that you heard before, okay, is a little animal, okay, that, uh, that uh, uh, the hotels use for updates, uh, their own uh, inventories and the price. And uh, because it's so easy for them to use it, okay, it's uh, deployed uh, constant changes in anybody that is using their own, uh, that inventory. And for us, it's translated roughly around in uh, 50 to 60 million transactions per day that are happening on this uh, database. So that system, that event processing that we built, have to handle that kind of uh, uh, size. So with this one in mind, okay, grid gain, fully replicated and, uh, and, uh, and fully uh, redeveloped the business logic, okay, was the big challenge. From one side, you have uh, the business logic written in uh, uh, SQL that they are currently using and is still used. And then we have the other business logic written in grid gain, okay, that uh, is executing a search. The price must match because when the users go to the search, they love the price and they go through the funnel to go for their final booking, okay, they leave uh, grid gain uh, technology and go to the existing 8020. And that moment, the booking engine that is still uh, resigned in the, in the legacy has a price that is the one that are going to be used by the final, that the customer. So if the price don't match, okay, is a problem. So, so far, we didn't have to implement, uh, so well, not true. We implement in any case uh, the tolerance uh, but so far we, know we never use the price match. It is going to be an issue in any case in the future, so to avoid this one, you always need to have a tolerance so that you build something that allow, when you go to the booking engine, to say if the customer came with a price set and the match is within these boundaries, allow the customer to make the booking, okay? So a little bit of um, uh, data for the because at least you can understand. So this is a, the typical performance testing that we've done. And, uh, am I, and uh, I present uh, something that is uh, very simple to, uh, ev for everybody to mimic, okay? So I use uh, uh, Amazon. We create a, a four nodes uh, uh, cluster using the AWS M4X uh, A4X large with 16 CPUs. Uh, that kind of uh, processor, uh, and 64 gig uh, uh, of RAM, of, of which 32 was the heap, okay? 
Then we create, uh, using JMeter, the injector, and we have eight injector that generate 320 se requests per second, okay? And uh, that really can easily go up to 1,000 if we want. So, how we can interpret this uh, graph? So we have, uh, this one was the famous uh, one second response times uh, that we must uh, be sure are below. And then we start uh, loading at a batch, batch of uh, 320 requests per second. And, uh, and then after a while, okay, we, we jump again and we jump again. What is very interesting about this uh, is this line, okay? This one is the average response time that we are uh, able to achieve, uh, 20 milliseconds. But look at how consistent it is. It's 20 milliseconds, okay, pretty much here, okay? And uh, the other one, okay, the 99 percentile, okay, it's pretty good, uh, okay, around 200 milliseconds, okay? And then, uh, what is important for you to understand that I think is a beauty of uh, grid gate? Look at here. At this moment, okay, when you go over here above 960 requests per second, okay, it starts collapsing. Okay? So most of the systems that you're used to, to work, uh, they have a, a gradual collapse, uh, but the performance degrades almost immediately. So as soon as you start adding a little bit of uh, uh, load, a normal uh, platform, okay, has immediately a sign of degradation. With grid gain, we notice this. There is no degradation until, until, you, until you stay within the sizing of the grid gain no cluster that you build. As soon as you go over, it crash. So smart people will pick this and we'll size in everything. And that's exactly what we, we did. I didn't want to go above because I could eventually go above and take a little bit extra, but why? I mean, at the end, okay, was not really this one what we want to achieve. We want to create a system that is consistent across uh, till this level and replicate this situation. So, what this shows to us was a very simple thing. So, the, uh, the mimic of the business logic, okay? So, I'm not going to replay, uh, say it again, why grid gain is good or not, okay? But uh, what was important for us is the fact that it really worked on top of the existing database. So, the concept of... Uh, 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 rip and replace that they mentioned before, it really didn't exist for us. We just dropped it in and worked perfectly with Microsoft uh, SQL, okay? And the fact that it has a full support for all the SQL and DML, it was a big plus for us because uh, most of our developers uh, are SQL developers uh, that basically say, okay, what I have to continue to do? Nothing. Just keep working as you're doing. Okay, just think about that in a different way. So the, the, the key, the only things that we really uh, had to do was uh, pick and choose uh, uh, which part you want to duplicate, optimize, and put it in sync. So why this is so important, I come back to the concept of the 80-20 rules. Because that is the decision as a business that you have to take. Once you agreed on what is... Uh, that doesn't support anymore the growth of the business, then you duplicate. Then uh, what you wanted uh, is uh, just uh, replace the business logic that you know is going to be faulty in the growth that the business gave it to you. I got a growth that from 300 I need to reach 600 million, okay, and, re and almost get a no extra cost and still keep the response time very low. For me, that was the typical thing. So I've touched already other areas that are less uh, understandable from a, uh, if you are not in the travel industry, 
but the search was very common, so that's why I thought it was a good example. The other thing is that uh, the use of the middleware was a key factor. They, 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 we, we using the middleware as the, uh, as the, uh, the consumer, where all the consumer goes and pick the work. It was interesting to hear to, uh, to another, to the previous uh, uh, meeting here that was uh, from the CTO of Gridgate, that they consider that uh, as a potential way for uh, put in sync uh, different data centers. So using the middleware as uh, the consumer for a data center that is uh, allocated in another countries. Right now, all our data centers are allocated in Europe. The idea for us is to go in uh, other areas where the business uh, want to expand, China, for example. And uh, the key for me is just I want to put another grid gain cluster over there. How I put this on and replicate it, it's not going to be really a data center that I want to replicate. I just I want to replicate the cluster. Okay? And the cluster is going to be replicated by the, with a, another consumer nodes uh, that is going to be over there, and they will take whatever data ha is dedicated for them. So the, the, the good things also of grid gain eh, is because uh, it was uh, so simple for us to replicate the business logic in their data structure that uh, uh, we were able to mimic customer behaviors in each platform. So if I have a two platform and they work with different kind of uh, APIs and so on, grid gain was able to mimic any API, any customer facing API, okay, from a single source. So there was uh, the source of the data that was, and business logic that uh, grid gain was uh, generating, and then we have a multiple uh, dispatcher based on which customer uh, platform was using. And that's make for us a, a, an ideal transition because uh, now that we're moving to, the, the, we start moving the customers, if a customer is coming from a platform that is uh, Travel Studio, that is the existing, one of the two existing that is going to be deprecated, they don't have to change the API model. They can keep still using the same API. It's a grid game that do all the work and change it. And that's a very uh, powerful thing. So a little bit of a graph for the where we were before in terms of uh, Platform. So this one is uh, the, the architecture that uh, I had before we started the, the journey of going into the grid game. So when the business uh, acquired the uh, uh, iVector, Tra Jack Traveler was in Travel Studio. The easy things that uh, we decided to do was just put these two in sync. So Travel Studio supply went over here, iVector over there. So in, in, in a very simple way, they become a customer of each other. And so if a client was using uh, Travis Studio, was able to get uh, the data from Travis Stu uh, iVector and vice versa. Was this uh, so, uh, really sustainable? I mean, uh, if you are a CIO or CTO in a company, it's a disaster because you need, it's very expensive. I have two data centers, not one, two different group of people maintaining, two different technologies, both are obsolete, uh, both are not scalable, they're both uh, fragile, they're both written, uh, what, probably 10 years ago, and they're legacy. So um, DB6 is definitely the, probably the newest language implemented in this technology, okay? But it's still, they're still good. Why do you want to reinvest it? I mean, just implementing a platform like this uh, is going to cost you a minimum 10 million to 15 million pounds if you have to do from scratch. Grid gain allow us to do little step and migration. So from this one, we went to this one, okay? So we kept uh, uh, iVector and we moved everything into in-memory. So now, the only thing that I had to do is that uh, put in availability rated inventory synced real time in the grid. Grid is now is the facing application for all the customers. 
And because it's now so fast, I'm able to do this one as well. That is opening another channel. There's a real-time uh, cash distribution, and at the same time, the capability to create a pull and push cash. For people that don't know why this is so important, is uh, for a lot of companies that are not uh, very good on search, uh, having the possibility to load my own inventory in their system and keep it updated uh, is a priceless thing because then uh, they will be able to continue with their own legacy application and make more money and more booking. And for us, uh, it's a key factor on distribution. And great gain, basically, the, one of the limitation of this was the computation of the pricing. Because you have to think about it, that, that for every customer that you want to distribute, uh, there is a new margin, a new price structure. And so if I have uh, 20 customers uh, that want to use uh, uh, my data, I need to have uh, 20 different uh, cash generated per client. And that is extremely heavy in computing time. Okay? But Greg Gain was able to do that in a very easy way. So a big plus for, uh, from that point of view. So now uh, let's go from uh, the best part for the financial people. Okay? And uh, when I presented this uh, to my CFO, he was extremely happy. Because at uh, the current form, okay, we have a combination of SQL Server Web Server, 100 nodes to generate 1,667 1, requests per second with an average response time of 2.5. With the same four nodes that you saw before, okay, I'm able to generate, uh, uh, I put uh, four nodes uh, at 100,000, at 1,000 requests per second, okay? We consider six at, uh, for a total of 1,500 requests per second. We add two extra in auto scaling, reaching 2,000 requests per second, average response time, 20 seconds. So in terms of efficiency, 92% saving in total cost of ownership just with this exercise. And uh, the scalability is uh, completely linear. I just have to decide to put a new cluster, a new node in the cluster, take care of myself, auto scaling, everything is uh, a big plus. So if you want to really take advantage of this one, you need to really implement auto scaling either in Azure or in AWS, depending on what you would like. And the feather is uh, uh, linear, okay, it's very predictable. And that's the things I like. When you see the performance going like a, in a, like a stairs, that's exactly what you want, is predictability of your sizing. Because then you can say, if the boss comes to you with the request that Dilbert got before, here what do you, I want to now jump at 600 milli, uh, million of searches, then you're gonna say, that's the cost. And you can trust that, that your, exp your calculation of the cost is pretty accurate because of that. The other things that you need to think about it is uh, uh, the, 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 the fact that you are able to uh, predict also the, 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 the cost uh, allow you also to start uh, going into uh, a, a more, I would say, predicting of uh, the forecast in a way that at least you can say if my forecast is going to be that uh, in uh, six months I have uh, instead of 300 I have a 450 million okay you can start planning ahead a proper total cost of ownership incremental and not uh, go like most of the people do it's like okay I need to now size in for 600 million and you start from day one with 600 million this is a very simple exercise you can achieve with, uh, uh, with grid gain. So, in conclusion, let's go back to this uh, uh, exercise. So, someone asked what's next step for us? Because we've, we touched the search, okay? And uh, uh, the next part for us is the integration of the third parties. And the third parties uh, have a huge uh, result data set. So that's, that's probably a debate for a lot of people. 
In the first exercise, the single nodes, everything was containing over there. As soon as I start in integrating the third party suppliers, okay, it won't fit anymore in my single node. So I started doing uh, uh, sharding. Sharding by criteria that you want to select. But the good news is once you pick a good key value for sharding, grid gain take care of that. And then uh, it really allow me to say, uh, I give an example. I picked as, uh, uh, as the criteria for sharding geography. Why? Because 99.9%, when you search for an hotel, you basically give me the location where you want to go. Most of the B2C website, they ask you to put the location. They don't let you search, give me the hotel where you want to be in England. It's insane. Which B2C is doing that? Okay, so they always try to give you a location of that. So the same criteria we use for the sharding. So now, when I search for London in my uh, third-party uh, data grid uh, cluster, the, cl the, the, the first cluster node that receives the request from the load balancer know where, the, where they have to do the implementation of the search in a specific node. It goes over there. Get the, get the computation over there, get the data, retrieve, and go back to the, the clients. So the cl all the data for London resign in one node. So we did the two replication, just to play safe at the beginning to see how does it work. And then later on, uh, uh, we're going to see how this an expand. One thing that we didn't implement it, okay, we use uh, most... Uh, of our implementation in, uh, in hip memories, more than off hip. And I saw now the, the implementation of the new version is gonna twist this one, and it's probably gonna make my life so easier because I don't have to think anymore on hip and, and, and off hip. I will do everything in off hip. Why didn't it come up before with this one? It would have saved me a little bit of time and money, but that's okay. So this is definitely one thing that we're gonna do. The, pre the pricing and yield management is the other one. In, uh, it changing constantly, and I need to start forecasting. Okay, forecasting costs a fortune because you have to have, a, a, you have to churn the data constantly to understand where, what is the best uh, uh, for pricing that you want to present. And these are the other things that is fit perfectly. I have all the data already in the nodes. I just need to uh, create the, the business logic, computational wise, to say, tell me what is the price I need to forecast. Because right now. I don't, with the price that I calculate is a real-time price and nothing, I'm not forecasting anything, but that's the next step that we want to do that. And uh, it's very critical for that. And then, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the other things that we want to do is like the data aggregation for monitoring and reporting. So a lot of people uh, thought that uh, grid gain was, uh, has a clear, definition compared to Cassandra, and I still consider that for several reasons, okay? But uh, we found that uh, uh, doing the, the monitoring and reporting that we're doing right now for all these, uh, we, we're basically chunk, uh, churning around uh, five terabytes of data per hour, and then we have to slice and dice and create a proper reporting for Eastern reporting. In several cases, okay, uh, using uh, uh, using a, a grid gain instead of going through the normal uh, criteria of Spark uh, and so on is faster. So that's another area where we're going to basically implementing grid gain for uh, for that one. And uh, we'll, we'll be taking advantage of the fact that the computation is much faster and then we'll get uh, the response, a real-time response is much uh, accurate and faster. So this is a for the next step. So in conclusion, okay, I'd like to recap at the end. I hope you guys uh, understood what, I is, uh, was, uh, what we were trying to uh, leave into you, the concept of the, how you protect your 80-20, okay, and the approach that we took. Just remember the famous car, the car garage, the hot rod, because uh, the 80-20 is a perfect combination of when you want to use grid gain. You can rebuild a brand new application, but why? Okay, go for a little step. Uh, at least that's what we find extremely uh, very simple step to do. Your 
uh, your business uh, is going to take advantage of this one because then they, they're going to find by for your for you directly what's the next step uh, for the for users this kind of technology. At the same time, the grid gain uh, design for us uh, a very easy path. And I, and I showed you that the idea that the grid gain can mimic the, the, the SQL structure that we have, identified uh, that uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheels. It's just a matter of uh, re-implementing the, the, the business logic. But at the same time, uh, you are capable to create uh, a replica, a mimic of uh, the existing technologies only in one and give you a good uh, uh, selling point for the business uh, in terms of the migration will not be a one big bang. And that's the key. For example, where are we now? now? That's, uh, we are live with uh, uh, the, the, the first uh, pilot's customers that we have. The pilot's customers are already taking advantage of uh, getting uh, response time 20 milliseconds versus 1.2 or three seconds sometimes, okay? So they churn in more search to us at the same time because they see that, okay? At the same time, we grow up with them in terms of the features that we want to deploy into the grid. And we are able to verify that if uh, the grid the, the, the mimic completely the performance and the expectation of the current platform. So it's, again, they are overlapping, but with an incremental in the grid. So not a big bang, but a very incremental migration that is much better proposition when you go to the CEO and you say, I'm gonna replace on this day, the old platform will go, the new platform come in. And what if it doesn't work? Like most of the time, okay? So that was a, a fantastic thing. Last but not, thing, not least, 92% of uh, total cost of ownership reduction. So you, can, you can beat that, uh, at least for now. If you find something cheaper than that, please let me know. Okay? That's it for me. If you have any question. Yeah. Yep. Currently, I have a search farm for that. No. So, the, the thinking this way, um, when the customer search, the, the, the logical step is uh, search and book. Yes. There are two different actions. And the, this uh, search is executed in the grid farm. Book is pretty much a pre-search and book. Okay? And the pre-search is basically mimic the same, uh, or better, grid mimic the same uh, business logic that the the, the booking platform has, uh, and that's where the price must match, and that's exactly what we did. So, in terms of uh, think about the complexity is when you have to start thinking uh, special offers, uh, margin rules, uh, all these one has to be applied and they are duplicate. They're, they're, I cannot skip that part. It's a duplication of business logic. So. Sure. I'm talking about, so like, um, if a customer comes in and they do a search for a given hotel room in London, right? Yep. Uh, the availability of such systems we have, the, the, given the special rates and everything, there are three rooms available at 180 quid a night or something. Yep. Right? Um, at what point in the search or booking process does that room become locked to that session? Are the so pre the other people yep. cannot, yep. You, know, you don't have to double book it, right? At the pre booking stage. So every time you do a search, I don't lock anything. So there is no, you don't really own any other ability, okay? As soon as you go into the booking path, okay, our system executes a pre-booking, that is the search and lock, okay? At that time, you have a few minutes where the ability is locked only for you, and if you don't finish in that time, I release the ability again. But because I have locked that, one event is sent to the grid instantly and say, by the way, the availability for users is now minus one. 
And then if it goes through the booking, it stays as it is. The booking just confirms that it doesn't touch anything else. Otherwise, if there is a, a release or a cancellation, it goes and update again. Any more questions? Yes. Both. Okay. So the um, first of all, we have a two different API. So we have uh, one API that is a previous uh, customer Jack Travel. And then a second API that is a total stay I vector clients. So these are completely different, okay? And there are two different uh, XML API that the customer are using. And if you really want to have a zero downtime uh, and migration, okay, we basically have to mimic this both. So I vector is going to be the, the the system of records. The Travel Studio will become the obsolete in the long run. But for now, I have to mimic. So grid gain, instead of thinking about it, I need to change one. We basically made business logic is one, and then it created different dispatcher. Dispatcher one is uh, an, a, a mimicking an XML of a vector. Dispatcher two, mimicking the XML of a Travel Studio. And each one of these two has different price structure and different price uh, uh, business logic. So the system take into consideration this one and mimic the price in that way. So yes, the two business logic mimic the into the grid game. Yeah. No, we didn't have to change. Uh, so. When we went through the process of using grid gain, the, 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 what we were trying to do is also try to optimize the areas that we thought was better in any case. So the area changed, and so the, the, the data model was uh, slightly different, uh, and so the queries will uh, it become different. But uh, most of the cases uh, were the same, especially in the areas uh, that was more complicated. Uh, for example, for... Uh, uh, special offers, uh, pr uh, margin rules, uh, uh, business logic like that is extremely complicated. And for us, it was very straightforward to say, this is the, the, business, the, the, the structure of the special offers put over there. How do you manage it in this way? So very, very straightforward. And that was a big plus because uh, the user now knows how to retrieve from one and the other one at the same time. Any other question? Yeah. Well, let's say that the, it was roughly around 18 months. Yeah. And I, I, to be honest, I mean, I, if you are mostly coders, or at least had a, uh, an history of that, uh, I can tell you that of 18 months, uh, probably more than uh, nine was just to make the business uh, agreed on uh, what we wanted to do. More than coding and developing, okay? And then for the second part, uh, I put my foot down and I say no changes. So I just uh, did... Uh, bug fixing in, uh, in the two application for the last uh, nine months. Oh, oh no, data, okay, that, that is a nightmare. They change constantly. So uh, one thing that we calculated, uh, just for the channel manager, we have a 50, 50 million transaction per day that generate changes. And they, the way that it works, uh, the channel manager changed into their core and then the event uh, push to the grid. So every day on the grid, we are roughly around uh, 70 million transactions. Uh, 
how, how do they preload it? So we preload all the data. It take, uh, you want to know how long it takes to preload all the data? Well, that's not uh, an easy, not an easy, a, a friendly answer. It took us more than 30 minutes, and that's not a good thing. So we still have to do improvement because on the, when we, if something happened, okay, I have a 30, 30 minutes downtime. Well, in the reality, where we do uh, a release, uh, we treat the nodes uh, in uh, separately. So we basically split the, we have eight nodes right now, instead of uh, eight, uh, and we split the two in four and four. So four goes completely down, and we upgrade completely, so we have a 30 minutes of reloading of these four. In the meantime, the transactions are keeping uh, happening on the other one. When we put uh, the other four up, we let the sync happen in first, then we put the other one down, and we do the, the upgrade for the other ones. And it's still taking 30 minutes, so there is an area that uh, uh, we need to work. Uh, I mean, I don't know how I was able to do five minutes, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, but uh, it also depends on how much data you have in the grid, uh, in your grid node. We basically, as I said, we use uh, uh, 64 uh, giga of uh, nodes, 32 and 32. 32 on hip and off hip. And, uh, uh, we probably were the first one to go at this level. That's why. Okay? Any more questions? Well, thank you so much, you guys.